Joe, we're here at the Tomball Museum Center at the Oil Camp House. We're going to do our interview today on March 1st, 2023. Good. Hello, I'm Kyle Stallings. We're here today at the Tomball Museum Center in the Oil Camp House. It's March. 1st, 2023, and we're here to talk with Joe Featherston, and uh, we're going to get some stories about his family and how they grew up and uh, lived in Tomball for years. Uh, Joe, can you give us your full name? Joe, Joe or Wayne Featherston. All right. When were you born? 1951, November the 25th. And which hospital or where were you born? Uh, Baptist Memorial. In Houston? In Houston. All right. Um, and what were your parents' names? My parents was Chris Featherston and my mother was Dolly Featherston. And did you have brothers and sisters? I had one sister, Christy. Does she still live in the area? She lives in uh, over in Alding. Okay. And uh, how many kids and grandkids do you have? I have three children and uh, three grandkids. Great. So uh, your dad, where did he grow up? He grew up here in Tomball. Yeah. Uh, what year roughly did he go to Tomball High? Well, 1940 to 44. All right. And how about your mom? She, where was she from? She was from, actually from uh, Navasota. Okay. And what did your dad do around the Tomball area? He, he worked for Southwest Bell, you know, at the time. And then, he, then they, you know, when it, they left Tomball, and I stayed here. I lived with my football coach, Buck Turk. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but uh, they're both deceased now, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, what were your grandparents' names? My grandpa's name was Joe Featherston. And my uh, grandma's name was Nellen Featherston. All right. Um, tell me about your grandpa. What did he do around Tomball, and when did he come? Well, he had a. He went from Allfield Town to Allfield Town, and started a picture show. Hmm. And so you know he went from you know just everywhere. All right. And then they rolled into Tomball, and he bought a building on Main Street from Mr. Ed Jokey and opened a picture show, and that was like 1933. Great. So did he come a little bit before that or sometime around there? Yeah, yeah. They he, he probably got here in 32, and then my grandma started teaching first grade in, I, I believe, 34 years. So do you know what your grandpa did in the oil patch, or did he work? No, he, yeah, he, didn't, he didn't do nothing in no. the oil patch. Okay. He just opened the picture show up. And All right. He... Uh, you know, Mr. Klein and his brother, Howard, and all, you know, all them guys was young, so they was talking about the picture show. Mm -hmm. He uh, he had that thing, he passed away in 1938, and he sold all the picture show, uh, you know, stuff to, to Mr. Brown, and he then he opened up the Winona. Okay, so that was the, the second theater here in Tomball, the one on a, did it, and I think, where was the picture show your grandpa had? What, where, roughly? It was what actually, there's, the lot is still there. You know, every lot is like a 25 by 100. Mm. And uh, it's right, but you know where that uh, Hodry's Furniture Store used to be, where the pickle is? Mm -hmm. Between the pickle and the, uh, the building next door. Okay. There's a vacant lot, and that's where it was. And that's on the north side of uh, Main Street? Yeah. Yeah. So then later, the Brown, Browns moved to Winona. That was on the south side somewhere, wasn't it, the theater? Yeah, well, they, I think he pretty much got right into to the Winona. All right. Yeah. Um, tell us about your grandmother. Um, what did she do here in town? Well, she, they bought a house on 508 Walnut Street, and uh, my daddy and my uncle and 
grandma and grandpa and her, her my great grandma, and she uh, she started teaching I believe in '34, and that was you know pretty much her life, mm -hmm. you know, because once grandpa died, she was just you know stayed. She didn't ever get married or, but she's in plenty of pictures around here. So she taught what grade? First grade. First grade, and for about how long did she teach? 30, 33 years. All right. Uh, you remember some other teachers she taught with there, Tomball Elementary? It was, what were some of the other teachers she taught with? Some of the well, uh, Bruce Hildegas' mother, Arla, Arla, was Miss, uh, Miss Williams, uh, uh, the other Miss Williams, uh, Zola May, and uh, Miss Parker. So Billy, Billy Sue Williams and then Zola May Williams, right? Both yeah. Of them. Yeah, okay. Billy Sue Williams, that was her name. Yeah. And, uh, Miss Parker. Was she Polly Parker's wife? Do you remember yes. that? She was, okay. She uh, she went to school in Tomball. Right. And uh, she was, uh, her, her parents was on Coleman's Dry Good, oh, yeah. which is right on the corner of Cherry and Maine. Is that Dora Coleman? I've heard the name Dora. Is that yeah, ring well, it, Dora Coleman. Right. Um, so let's go on to uh, when when you came through school. Um, what what are some of the teachers you remember that you had through like elementary? Uh, I pretty much remember them all. You know, Miss Smith was the kindergarten teacher and. First grade was uh, Miss Bankston, I think her name was. And then when I got into the second grade, I was uh, Miss Low. Miss Odom was first started out, but she got pregnant, and so Miss Linda Lowe took over. Third grade, I was with Miss Ferris. Fourth grade, I was with Miss Swan. And then fifth grade, Miss Parker. And then we went to junior high. So. so where was the first elementary school located that you went to? Well, the first one we start is out there where that special children's building is, right down there back, back at Klein's. You know. Where Klein's Grocery used to be, the supermarket? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's, it's kind of just east of that uh, veterinary clinic now, right? The right. Where, where they're building right now? But uh, the high school burnt down. And so the high school kids had to take over that this school, and so we we moved over to the First Baptist Church hmm. for you know till they got the new school built. But it was a uh, it was just going to school, you know, nothing like today. Yeah, uh, where'd you go? What school after the fifth grade? I'm sorry. Which, which school building did you go to after the fifth grade? Uh, we went to the junior high on Cherry Street, and then, you know, through the eighth grade, and then we moved over here to, to on Main Street. All right. And that was the original high school on Main Street. Uh, well, it was, it was the one that they rebuilt after the fire, yeah, right? exactly. Okay, I see. Um, what did you, uh, through school, or even before school, like, did you do Little League, or what kind of sports did, were you involved in? Oh, I was heavily involved because that was the only thing to do, yeah. you know. So started out in Little League and progressed on through Pony League. and Then we went to, went into school, you know, and started playing basketball, track, and got to high school. I stuck mostly with football. I was able to receive a football scholarship to Texas Tech, and I went there for a while till about the first Blue Norther come through. Yeah. But... Uh, it was a, it was just a great time, you know. Still, still in contact with lots of people we knew, you know. You remember uh, your, your coach with the little league? J. F. Fry was my coach mm -hmm. all through little league. What team were you on? The White Sox, Wilson White Sox. Hmm. Uh, you remember the umpire we had here in town for so many years? Yeah, uh, Mr. Dory was one of them, but well, he's the main one. And then uh, Rumfield 
Mr. Brumfield, he, he umpired, you know, a little bit of shit. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Um, we only had three teams, so, you know, we just had to just keep playing and playing, same teams over and over. But it, it got you through the summer. Mm -hmm. When you got in high school, um, who were some of your coaches that you, you trained under? Well, the main one was uh, Buck Turk. And he was a head football coach and track coach. And Don Schindelwolf was another basketball coach. And Raymond Jackson, he was a basketball coach. And, and there was, you know, others. Gene Harrison, for one, he was, he was one of our assistant coaches, but he was a really good guy, really tough. When we was uh, when we were juniors, he was he got here and he was making it tough. And all the sophomores and seniors, except for three, all of them quit. And uh, they didn't want a part of it. And but what them two or three days later, there some of their daddies is bringing some of them up back up there, you know. But it uh, it really helped us out because we had to, used all the sophomores and juniors. By the time we got to seniors, we had a heck of a good team. Hmm. So uh, when your parents moved away, you were able to stay here living with the coach, right? Yeah. That's cool. Well, he wasn't going to let me go when I, I didn't want to go. Yeah. So uh, I had pretty much had it made. I was a lifeguard there at the swimming pool for three years and uh, lived right by the football field. So I got a pretty good dose of uh, film work and uh, what the coaches do. So, you know, it was pretty interesting. Hey, he's the one that taught me how to drive. Did he teach you to drive? Was he doing that back then? Who did? Buck Turk. Oh, did he? Yeah. I didn't even think he could swim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Uh, no, he didn't teach me. Uh, shoot it. All you can do is hang out at the swimming pool. So yeah. I, I pretty much learned how to dive on my own. Yeah. Well, well Jimmy Ebchurch was at. I mean, driving the car. You oh, know. oh yeah, yeah, drive. Yeah. Yeah. Now. He, you know, we did. Well, we, we had a little bit different because uh, we had junior Olympic track in in Houston, and so I would I would always drive. You know, drive us over, drive us back. And then we'd go drive, we'd go places, you know, go down to a movie or just whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, he taught me how to drive. I already knew how to drive because yeah. you know how it was back then. Sure. I was driving when I was nine years old around Tomball. Yeah. My daddy and then with uh, two other guys, they carpooled. And so a buddy of mine, he'd spend the night and we'd get up early, early in the morning for, you know, my mother and my sister even thought about getting up. And we'd get the old Falcon out, and we'd just drive up and down the roads. Mr. Bolton and uh, Mr. Poland, Shorty Poland, he would see us, you know what I mean? They, they didn't do nothing. They just, just kept on doing it. Mr. Bolton was a policeman back then, I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was different times. They took care of the kids around Tomball, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, my senior year, I had a car. And some respected boys and me, we went down to the Little League and vandalized. We started doing donuts out in the baseball field. Well, it didn't take long. Mr. Uh, Boat, you know, came for us. And he, didn't, he didn't lock us up, but he said, you boys be down there in the morning, y'all get this field, you know, straightened up. And we was all down there, took care of it. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you remember your grandfather? Did you was he still alive when you were, or did he, he pass before you you were born? Right? No, he he yeah. passed in, in 1938. Yeah. Did you hear stories about him much? Oh yeah, I heard plenty of stories. Yeah. You know, yeah. he was he was a veteran World War One, and he was actually born in the Oklahoma Indian Territory, and he met my grandma because she was from Comanche, Texas, which was right across the Red River. Yeah, so they, when they, they traveled, like I said, but uh, when he passed on, my grandma and them lived in a house over there on Tomball, 508 Walnut. 
But let me back up. When, uh, when my grandpa died, the boys from the very first football team, like John Reese and Mr. Upchurch, and just all of them, and at townspeople, they actually dug my grandpa's grave out at Salem Luther and, you know, and buried him. So, but they, when he died, my grandma and grandma, great grandma, my daddy and brother, daddy and uncle, well, their their house burnt down, and the townspeople, like Mr. Bradigan and Mr. Ferris, just just everybody, well, they actually got it together, and they everybody came over like an old born resident and built her house, and, and it was they moved in it in two weeks. And yeah, it's still there to this day. Cost two thousand dollars to build, and I think that the low house is worth over three hundred thousand now. It's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I had some really good neighbors in Tomball back then. Yeah. Um, how'd you get in the concrete business? Well, it was a kind of a crazy story. I was I was actually going to be a teacher and football coach, but. I just you know didn't pan out, so I, I went into the United States Army and I was in there for you know a couple of years. When I got out, Richard Jones, uh, a fellow Tomball guy, well he was working for Brown and Root, and so he said, "Get out here," you know. So I stepped out there and I took to it really you know really good. So after about five years, I said, "Shoot, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in business." Yeah, I've been in it almost 47 years now. Mm -hmm. but, uh, have you done any other types of work or businesses around Tomball through the years or just mainly concrete? Nah. Yeah. The only job I ever had was lifeguard. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then when, when I came back, you know, into concrete work, which was around here, but it's all over, but, you know, I lived here. Uh, my kids grew up, you know, we had a house over on Barber Street and, and Tomball, and uh, they all, my girls both went to Concordia Lutheran, and uh, my son went to Tomball, and he, he graduated from LSU, and he's a major in the Air Force right now. And my daughter's married to a Marine or high school sweetheart, and that's the one who has two little grandkids on her. And my other daughter just graduated from UTSA. She was going to be a school teacher, but I don't think she wants to do it. You know, she's she's changing her mind, mm -hmm. and you know how it is. You can't tell them nothing. Well, I think you know, kids have to find their own way, and they do eventually. You know. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Uh, did you hear stories about your grandmother teaching school all those years? Oh my gosh, I did. She. Uh, well, one of them I can tell you is uh, Mike Reese. Uh, did you know Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what kind of character he was. And in, in the first grade, he was the same way. So my grandfather, grandmother had to go to, to some kind of meeting, and she was out one day. And the substitute teacher, well, she didn't put up with Mike. You know what I mean? And, and she, you know, gave him a spanking or whatever you want to call it, you know, the paddle. And when my grandma got back the next day and heard about it, boy, she hit the fan and went down to the principal, who was Mr. Odom, and, you know, laid into that woman. But, uh, but she was notorious for discipline. I mean, she carried her ruler around, and if you was talking or not doing anything, boy, she'd come by and pop you on the, on the knuckles, you know. <laughs> It, it, she was very disciplined. That, she didn't have any trouble with students. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But um, did did she attend uh, some of the churches around town? Yeah, I've attended a few. Yeah. I was baptized uh, at First Methodist, and well, christened, and that's where I went. And then, then I switched over to. Everybody in high school was going to First Baptist. That's where I got baptized, Mr. Pastor Dillard. And uh, but then, as I grew up, I started going to Salem Lutheran, which I still consider it my church. Mm -hmm. You know, 
How about your grandmother? Where did she go to church? She she was always First Methodist. Yeah, she was in the choir, and you know, just she didn't drive for about I don't know about th about thirty years, and she found she got an old car, you know, boy she'd just be catting around everywhere, but going to First Methodist was pretty much uh, what she did. She, her and Miss Coleman. Uh, and in the choir, and you know, just all, just all the things associated with First Methodist. But she was a, you know, I, you know, I, I wasn't as scared of her as you know a lot of people was. One reason I was fast, <laughs> but, uh, but she had my number. One time, I had to stay over at that house with her for a summer, and. Because uh, I really wasn't paying that much attention in school, and so I got drilled pretty good that summer. But you know how it was growing up around town; just everybody knew everybody. I don't know who said it, but it, and it said it takes a village to raise a child, and that's exactly what Tomball is, you know, man. I bet I had three different, four different people think I was their son, you know what I mean? And, uh, but it was just, you know, great growing up. I, I, I couldn't even think of anything wrong with it, you know. So I've heard about Coleman's store quite a bit from other folks. Uh, do you have any memories of that, or was it still there when you, you were in, or did you just hear stories about it? About what, Tomball? Coleman's store. Oh. Yeah, Coleman's, uh, it, you know, back then it was a wooden sidewalk, you know, out there in the front. And Miss, Miss Coleman, she, she had arthritis really bad. And uh, that was Miss Parker's mother. But we'd go down there, Terry Parker and I were good friends. And, well, yeah, we'd just spend the afternoon just crawling around up in the store, you know, and just, you know, doing anything that you could do to have fun. Do you remember the old Braddockham store? Oh, yeah. Did you go there much? Oh, shoot, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had to go there and get some good meat, you know, from uh, yeah. uh, Louisville. And, yeah. And I can't really remember Mr. Braddockham that well. I don't know if he was even alive when I was growing up. Miss Braddockham, I you know, remember her real well. Uh, and Vic Braddockham. You know, he was he was a head butcher, but it was just a not, it was just an old country store here. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> how about some of the other businesses that come to mind around Tomball or some of the buildings around? Any any pop out at you? Well, uh, you know, we had a, I always go down and get you a hamburger at the City Cafe and listen to Arnold and his wife uh, raise cane with each other. Remember Arnold's last name? Who were they? Holders. That was that was Raymond Holders' brother, and uh, he owned it forever. You know, because back in them days, say my mother and my sister and I, we could, you could get a bus at about five thirty in the morning and go to Houston. We'd go to my grandma's house and then come back home that afternoon on on a bus. But she, Joe Sebestis, you know, Mama had a place. You know, burger, you know, food place. It was really good. And, man, it was just every business. The picture show, Mazden's Pharmacy, shoot, uh, well, Klein's, you know, when it was down it, right there on the corner of Maine, you know, if we used to have, a, you might remember, but we'd have cakewalk, you know, so they'd shut Main Street down and put chairs all in a big circle. And then they play the band. Tomball band would play music, and everybody just walk around. When they stop, you sit down. And, you know, if you was lucky, you you want a cake or a pie. But it was always packed. You know. Same thing when the first Christmas parade came, the very first one. Me and a buddy of mine, we went down there, and they put us to work. You know, put on one of the little big old heads. You know. And, Get out and walk down Main Street, but it's it, it's really grown now though. 
Do you remember the the bonfires we used to have there at that elementary school ground? The bonfires? Bonfires. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there were some crazy times, but uh, one year, uh, always somebody doing something, you know. Magnolia supposedly came by the bonfire and throw shotgun shells in there, you know. So, and that was the day before. So we all, everybody in the school, high school, went down there and moved the bonfire over. And we had it, but. You remember they found shotgun shells in there? We didn't, nobody found nobody it. Nobody found it, yeah. yeah. All right. It's just like Klein coming over and they would burn a big okay in our football field. It was probably Coach Turk, you know, that did it, but. Get you riled up. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, kids were close back then, you know. Real close. Well, for the newer folks, the Tomball, why don't you describe the bonfire? Because uh, they they probably didn't ever see it, but uh, describe how it was built and, and what the kids did. Pardon? The bonfire. Describe how they built it here in Tomball back in those days. They just uh, just everybody bought you know just limbs you know just everything. We you know we didn't burn trash, but just limbs and you know. That's about all it was, but I mean, it would be a pile. I remember it was pretty big back then. It yeah. wasn't as big as the Aggie Bonfire, but oh, it was pretty no. big. No, but it, it, was, it was good burning. Yeah. But, yeah, some other businesses, like Sonny Wilcox's place, you know, you'd go down there and buy your baseball, you know, for a dollar. You remember what his business was called? It, I thought it was a Texan, uh, God dang. I don't. Sonny Wilcox. It was a, it was a hardware store that has a name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a franchise. I can't remember that name though. But and always getting your hair cut down there at Nobby's was always a treat. Yeah. Nobby, Nobby and, and Joe. Yeah, Nobby and Joe and, and uh, another guy, Harold. Forget Harold's last name, but I'd always sit there and try to get Joe, you know, because Nobby, he would, he would, you know, we had short hair anyway. It's hard to screw up, yeah, but so I'd just kind of hang there until Joe was ready, and I'd just jump up there, let him cut my hair. I still see him to this day, but that was a, that was a good place to learn a lot of things. Nobby always had something good to say. Yeah, he was he was very unique. You remember those tattoos he had on his oh, forearm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a good guy, though. Yeah. Down at the other barber shop, I didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't really like to go there. But so once I hit Nobby's, you know, that's all, that's the only place I ever went. You remember the name of the other barber shop? I believe Mr. Uh, Stokes. Was the barber owned that place? Rayford's, Rayford Stokes's daddy. They would have horses parked, you know, tied up, going to his, you know, his barber shop. Hmm. Then the library came in. That was a big deal. They came in on a bus, you know, come on every Wednesday, and you go down there and get you some books, and bring them back the next week, you know, way way before you know getting the library, but. Where did the bus pull up to? Mm -hmm. it, did, right there under that big old oak tree right down there at the end by the railroad tracks. And the tree's not there anymore, I don't think. But right there, it just kind of by Bradigums and, you know, right in that neck of the woods. Then they moved down to a little house on Epp Street until they, you know, got big time. But... All it was to do back then was uh, we'd ride our bikes to Spring Creek, for one thing, you know, and spend all day out there, you know, swimming in the creek. And Which place did you go on Spring Creek? At the park. The park. Down there, at, you know, at the end. They got a Confederate marker down there now. So, I mean, back then it was nice, you know. It'd be tough to get in it now. But there was a lot of influential people around Tomball that uh, 
Everybody, everybody helped everybody out. When you ride your bikes down to Spring Creek Park, um, you remember these old sandy roads around here? Oh yeah, I mean Sandy Sandy Lane. You know, it, when you turned off 149, it, it was sand. And I had a buddy. He was a big old boy. He was the same grade, but he was huge. And I and I had a bike, uh, so I'd have to ride on handlebar, and he pedaled, man. We'd go right on through that sand. What was his name? Phil Hahn. He grew up here and he moved away. His Both his brothers went to Tom Ball, but uh, Phil, he left and went to Aldine. He became a uh, very good football player at University of Houston. He even played uh, in the Canadian League for a while. But unfortunately, he passed on. Yeah. There's a lot of my classmates I have. You know, we was at the 50-year reunion. I think we had about 10 people that has, that has died, you know, out of our class. And you know it wasn't very big. Ours was only 84 people in the class. Who are some other folks in your class that you're good friends with? Well, Terry Parker, and Jerry Pryor, uh, Joe Yox, uh, Danny Tipton, Jim and Joe Warren, Keith Thomas, you know, they were, it was, you know, you pretty, you get to be pretty much friends with all the athletes for sure, but just in school, you know, just everybody, like your sister Melissa and Cheryl Johnson, and, you know, just kids you, you grown up with, you know, you go to school with somebody every day, you, you know, you get to be friends. Yep. Uh, you know how your parents met? Well, my grandma and my, my grandma, you know, her mother, she was uh, divorced, but she had five, seven kids, five, five daughters and two uh, uncles. And they lived in Houston, so my daddy was working uh, at Southwestern Bell, I you know I guess they was probably out dancing, cause they always loved everybody always loved to dance. So when they got married, we lived and I was born. We lived in a little old house, it was little than this one, with five, uh, all my aunts, uncles, grandma, and me and daddy and my mother. Uh, we lived there about a year and a half before we moved back to Tomball, but. Uh, I was well taken care of. That's great. I used to tell them, you know, I could change my own diaper when three days old. But no, but I was spoiled rotten, to be honest with you. Yeah, but, so what um, did your dad talk much about his work for Southwestern Bell? What did he do for him? Just a lineman. Yeah. And. Uh, My dad and I, we were, you know, I loved him, but we weren't really close. Because when, when I got up in the mornings, I was gone on my bike. You know, you, I was out playing baseball, football, whatever, you know, growing up. Yeah. And get on home when it gets start getting dark. You know, so he used to tell me, you know, you know, you, you know, Joe never stayed home, you know. Heck. But, you know, it wasn't, you know, back then it was different, man. You know, we didn't even have air conditioners. And uh, so, man, I got out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Too much fun stuff to do around town, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, I imagine it's different for kids nowadays. Everybody's got their cell phone in their pocket and they don't have to be connected to a line. But in those days... The phone line had to be wired together, otherwise it wouldn't work, right? Nah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when we first started getting on the phone, it was a party line for one thing. And uh, and then uh, I used to probably, you know, I guess I was in love about the eighth grade with uh, Dr. Truett's daughter. And they moved back to Mississippi. And so I would go down and take all the change I could get and go down to that payphone where the bell telephone was. And 
you could talk for three minutes and then you had to put some more money in it. But the money would just keep coming back. Hmm. You know, go, <laughs> you put the money in there, got three minutes, but the money came back. So you just keep talking. I thought I was the only one that knew about it until, you know, started seeing cars park there, you know. But, man, we used to talk for hours. But uh, she went to Tom Ball. She was a, she was a love in my life. But she, she uh, retired from the VA as a head nurse, and she lives in Alaska. But we keep in touch. And that Southwestern Bell building, was it? The one there close to the water tower? Yeah. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> yeah, and I climbed the water tower. That's for sure. Did you? I heard a lot of kids did that. Oh, back man. Then. <clears throat> it was, wasn't so bad because when you're climbing up the tower, it was, you, you, you're leaning in. But when you got to about the last 20 feet, it was kind of going back. So, man, you had to mm, just hang on. Hold on tight, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> So what have you seen over time around Tomball? What does it feel like now compared to when you were a kid? Well, you know, a lot of people have reservations about it because, you know, you know, there's a lot of people around. But I grew up in town, so, you know. In town is pretty much to me, you know, the same, you know. You know, I live in the first house that Mr. Klein built. And, uh, Nice neighborhood, you know, just people walking, dogs, you know, it's just, it's just nice. Now, I, I think it, I think it's all right. Was that Mr. A.B. Klein's house? You remember which? No, which? no, Mr. Teddy Klein's Teddy house. Klein's. Okay. Yeah, it was, I think it was built in 1959. But uh, then he, you know, he family started getting bigger, so that's when he moved out there by the cemetery. Yeah. Uh, out on 2920 toward uh, Hooks Airport, uh, yeah. out there, right? Mr. Klein was a, he was just a super good guy. I mean, and Robert was too, you know, going to the grocery store. You know, when they was closing the grocery store, I know everybody, everybody felt that way, man. I remember I went in there, boy, I almost started crying because, uh, you know, this seemed like a shame. But we actually wound up pouring a lot of concrete there for the VA. And uh, so it all turns out. Yeah, you remember going into Klein's supermarket and Mr. Robert Klein would always be there to shake a hand. Uh, everywhere. And, and the same women, you know, working at the counters. It's like going to see part of your family when you go in those stores around the yeah, hall. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but, but like Matthew and well, even the client uh, Robert's sons, they're both good guys. And you probably went to school with them. Went to school with Joe and uh, his little brother Jeffrey was a little younger. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey, he's he's carrying on. Uh, he, I, he, you know, they got pickles, Klein brothers pickles, everything. And so that's what he does. Mm -hmm. You know, goes to all these stores. And, Drops these things off. Do uh, you remember the Klein's Feed Store? Yeah. Back behind that uh, that Ministries b building now, but it's it was always there, right? <clears throat> it's pretty close to the water tower. Yeah. yeah. Right across the street. Yeah. I believe George Klein owned it back way back then, but I, it might have even been Mr. The A. B. Klein's grocery store at one time. And then George Klein, then it became a feed store. And now it's just an antique place. Yeah, it was fun to go in there as a feed store. You remember they had those baby chicks in the back there? Yeah. But that's one thing uh, about town is there's so many daggum little old shops. It's hard to imagine anybody making any money in them things. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's mostly like wives. You know, their husbands... Must evidently just be paying the bill, because I don't see how some of them could stay in business. There's a lot of little shops around, and it's pretty neat. My ex-wife, who uh, 
I care, still care about, but she owns a little uh, gelato place here on on Main Street called Dottie's. It sells ice cream and whatever gelato is. Yeah, nice. What's her name? Lorraine. Nice. There's a lot of good little shops and restaurants around. Some good food, good eats in Tomball. Yeah. <clears throat> you remember the goalpost? Oh, yeah. yeah. Tell me about the goalpost. Man, the goalpost. Well, I remember when it was Od Odell Vault, you know, Odell's place. It was the same way. But then Mr. Barnett and Miss, Miss Barnett, they opened it and, you know, called it the goalpost. And it's just where everybody went, you know. Especially when you was playing football in the summertime, you know, you had practice twice a day, man. First thing you'd do, go over and get you a couple of cherry Cokes, you know, yeah. but, and eat a hamburger. But jukebox and pinball machines, so everybody was hanging out. Yeah, it was right there by the, the old high school there on Main Street. It's pretty close to the school. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah. It, it, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And right across the street with Bill's, Bill uh, Gamble's place. He had, he owned a hamburger place. Uh, it's some kind of little old business now, but but uh, Miss Gamble, Miss Gamble, uh, she ran it. You know, it was just the same thing. It wasn't as prioritized as uh, the goalpost. You know, uh, being a the goalpost, but but they had it for a while. And, then it became Smitty's and some other things. But same way, you know, if you go over to Katy or somewhere like that, you know, you see the same story. Yeah. So uh, the the high school there on Main Street after it burned and they rebuilt it uh, in that stadium they had behind it, that little football field, is that where y'all played? Yeah. 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 I think uh, we was at... They played there uh, two more years after I graduated, and then they b moved over here to the, uh, the one they got now. Sandy Lane. Yeah. And uh, I think they call it Baker Drive now. That yeah. still confuses me. Whatever it is. Yeah. But uh, we had that, that old that field was immaculate, man. I'm telling you, it was a, it was a pleasure to play on because Mr. Parker he he took care of it, you know. I mean, just kept it fertilized and watered, you know, so when football season got here, it was nice. And just like any Texas town on a Friday night, you know, people are going to go to the game. Yeah. I remember the concession stands under that. Um, it, was, it had, you know, the the stands on each, both sides. And <clears throat> I, I can't hardly picture it anymore, but I, I remember being there. I was quite a bit younger, but we'd go out there before it, uh, I think I went my freshman year there, and then we went to the Sandy Lane campus. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember much about that that field and playing on it? Oh Anything yes, else? we had some, we had some good times. You know, we had some, you know my senior year we had a really good team. Uh, we won every game except one, and the team that beat us was Friendswood. They beat us by two points. And they went all, back back then. Only one team. You had to win district to go to the playoffs. You know, like now you can have four teams make the playoffs. But they went all the way to uh, semifinals before they got beat. But it was just a, just a lot of fun. You know, it was a lot of work. But but I grew up loving football. You know, I just took to it, took to it like duck in the water. What other teams did y'all play that year, that senior year? Uh, we would play Klein. When we first started out, we played Klein, Magnolia, and then we Belleville, Katy, then Brookshire Royal came into it, and you know that was kind of like our district. But back when you know when I first started hearing the doggone uh, people hollering and stuff down there on Friday nights, I was young. So I finally ventured on down there. Next thing you know, coaches had me shagging balls, washing clothes, you know. So, you know, I was pretty much around it the whole year. What so, position did you play? I played quarterback. Yeah. And what did you play when you got to Texas Tech? 
I was I was a quarterback. Mm -hmm. okay. It's pretty. Uh, I was only like five eleven and one hundred and sixty pounds. You know what I mean? So it wasn't it, it wasn't no tougher than Tom Ball, but it was a little different. Uh, I stayed there, but I, eventually I just you know faded on it. You know what I mean? I was homesick. Lubbock wasn't my place, and uh, that's you know that that came to an end. But when I got out of the army, I got another football scholarship to Sam Houston State. But I had got kind of you know worldwise by then. You know, so we didn't we didn't we didn't even finish spring training. You know, because yeah. I I had a GI Bill. And, Buddies, we lived together. They tried to get me into the dormitories, which was whew, was pretty bad, you know. But after that, it's just been all concrete. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing the the size of football players nowadays, especially in the pros. Those oh, guys man. are so huge, right? Whew. I mean, it it's amazing people don't get killed. <laughs> I mean, well, that guy had that heart attack, you know, this year on Monday Night Football. He got hit so hard in his chest mm. and it made him go into a cardiac arrest. Uh, but the, the, guy, the guy saved him, you know, one of the trainers. He's doing good now. But, yeah, you're right. They're huge. Um, going way back, do you know, uh, where the Feathersons came from before they got to the U.S.? England, from what I understand. Yeah. They came over here, three brothers, and they were indentured in Virginia, and then they started spreading out, you know. And I think they went to Tennessee and, you know, just other parts. Now, my grandpa, he, he grew up, like I said, he grew up in Lawton, Oklahoma, which was was still in Indian territory, wasn't even a state. And, you know, he he was just a hustler, you know, businessman. Mm -hmm. You know roughly when they came over, the Feathersons, to Virginia? Yeah, uh, you know, this from what uh, my sister did one of those uh, mm -hmm. things. It was like in the late 1700s. Mm -hmm. and okay. How about your mom's family? What was her maiden name? Burkhalter. Burkhalter. Yeah. You know where her family came from? As far as I know, Bryan, Texas. They lived right on the Brazos River. Uh, well, you know, College Station. They lived right there on the Brazos River. Uh, I mean, my grandma, her daddy, he he was big. Uh, I mean, he, he worked a lot of people around there, you know, a lot of black people. And... They, that's pretty much where they grew up. My, then he, my mother met, my grandma met my grandpa, which was a Burke altar. And back then, you know, everybody was moving to Houston for, for the work. And he was an iron worker, but he was he was a pretty mean man. And, you know, it didn't last long. Mm. You know, yeah. and he had seven kids, and, and he liked to really drink and and, and stay out. Yeah, this didn't work out, but but another all of them moved over to the north side of Houston, you know, and that's where they that's where they was from. All right, you don't know when the Burke Alters moved into Texas? How far back? Oh man, I I really can't say on that, but I would imagine because uh, there's a lot of Burke Alters out here off uh, that went to Klein. You know, that are my kinfolk. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they was, I know they was around uh, that area is in the early 30s, mm -hmm. but probably, you know, later than that, earlier than that. Mm -hmm. What were the holidays like for y'all and your family around Tomball? What was what? The holidays? How, how did y'all celebrate the holidays, like Thanksgiving or Christmas? Yeah, basically about like everybody. But Thanksgiving, we'd, all, we'd always travel to my aunt's house in Houston because she she would have everybody over. And then Christmas time, we generally just, you know, stayed around the house and open presents and, you know, play with all the daggone junk toys you got. 
the house you grew up in in Tomball, about how big was that? She, it wasn't very big. Uh, it's similar to this. This is a humble house. Yeah, this is a two but, bedroom. You know, it's, it's similar to this. And how many people did y'all have living in that house? Yeah, uh, just four. Four people. Mom and daddy and me and my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Did y'all have the sleeping porch on the back of it or not? A sleeping porch? No. Nah. No. We had a we had a porch, big old front porch, you know, with shaded tree. To, you know, you probably could have slept out there if you wanted to, but uh, no, nah, we just just regular old house, mm -hmm. doing what you do in Tomball. You remember the cars that your family had early on? What what type of cars did y'all have? Oh, well, my grandpa he come into town and he was driving an old Model T. Ford, you know, when we first started, Daddy, you know, getting cars, he had like a 57 Ford, you know, and then, then we had a 1960 Falcon, boy, I tell you, that's when we started going to Houston Auto Games, and we would load that Falcon up, and me and him would go pick all my uncles up and, and go, you know, Houston Auto Game, so... That, that one, and then he had a Chrysler, you know. And by, by that time, I forgot the other one, but when they moved, I think they had an Oldsmobile, you know. You remember that Falcon, did it have a straight six or V8 yeah. or what? Straight six. Yeah. Yeah, had a, back when I was telling you about driving around, uh, this was a pretty idiotic thing to do, but we'd get going down Cherry Street as fast as that Falcon would go and slam it into second gear and lay rubber. Yeah. Came came a time when the transmission went out. My daddy, he couldn't figure it out, you know what I mean? I didn't tell him. So we we we, we laid off driving the Falcon. Yeah. Was it was standard shift? Yeah. Standard. All right. Did you ever do ag with Mr. Parker? Yeah, I did. One year. Hmm. It just wasn't for me. You know. What'd you raise? Huh? What type of animals did you get involved with? A pig. Hmm. And it was a disaster. Uh, kept it out there on Cherry Street. And man, that thing got so big and fat. And when they, when, you know, they had that show, everybody sells their, Mr. Parker had to buy mine. You know, because it, it wasn't, it was just a big old fat slob, you know. But I was in, I was in ag, junior chapter conducting team, but that was it, one year. What's the junior chapter conducting team? What did that do? Oh, you just debate. Oh, interesting. All right. Any other clubs that you remember back then, high school? I pretty much was just involved in sports, you know. I was on the Cougar Claw staff because I, you know, I did write stories. Uh, that was the only thing, the only club I really belonged to. Mm -hmm. All right. What type of vacations did y'all take as a family? Or did y'all leave town for a vacation or stick around? No, nah, we stuck around most of the time. We might go to up there at around one of the lakes up there around Lake Buchanan or something like that. But we didn't really get into vacations that much until I, when I got married, we found the, the Ozark Mountains and we found a place up there and you, y'all might want to check it out. Bass Pro owns it. It's called Big Cedar Lodge. I mean, it's the, it's the most perfect spot in the world. So. We went there 18, uh, 4th of July is in a row. Mm -hmm. Till my kids all gone and yeah. yeah. But I love it up there, but there's nothing to do, you know. Mm -hmm. Plus tornadoes. It's been a pretty simple lifetime here as, as I was, you know, Married with kids, we had Texan season tickets, so we we went to every game, you know. Kids, they just loved it, you know. 
my oldest, my youngest daughter, she was a, whew, she she didn't miss a game, you know. And uh, yeah, that was pretty fun going to texting games. It got a little rough, uh, you know, because it's a rough day. You get get to the stadium at eight o'clock in the morning, cooking and and just you know, as I getting older, it was a little bit tougher. As you were telling me during the break about uh, Mr. Holdreth. What what did he do around town? Well, uh, Raymond, everybody called him Pete, and uh, Mr. Schrader, they owned the, the Tomball Furniture. The, uh, Raymond, he he was in the stock market, and he was he was a whiz, you know. So he did he did really well, really well. And, he lived a long life, you know, and he, he liked to go over to Louisiana and uh, hit the gambling spots. And he was just, you know, just a good old guy, you know. And Mr. Holdreth, he said you learned some history from him? Yeah. How did that work? Did you go visit him pretty often? Oh, he just, uh, just stories. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them, you, probably, you know, we, we knew. Uh, but he was just, he was an interesting guy. Did you hear stories about some of the farm families around town? Well, uh, I heard some of the Heatons, you know, where the Heatons feed stories. I don't remember that one. It's, it's up there on Stubner Airlines right before you get to 1960. Mr. Heaton, he owned all, right there on 2978, close to, uh, close to uh, two, uh, 2920. He owned just, you know, all that land. And, but he was telling me about when he came from Germany and uh, they got to Galveston and he walked all the way to, you know, out here and, you know, just got to doing what he did, you know, mm. farming, you know, feed store and cattle, things like that. Do you remember anything about the, the dairy folks around town? Yeah, his daughter was uh, Barbara Sieber, and they owned a big dairy out there on uh, Hussmith Road. Mm -hmm. and, and Mr. Beckendar, you know, they had a you know pretty good size operation mm -hmm. out there where they lived, you know. They sold all that land where that football field is. So the, the his dairy was way back down there. Yeah, the new stadium that Tomball built. Yeah. yeah. It's something. Huh. Yeah. Almost like a daggone pro stadium. Yeah. Have you seen a, a game there yet? I have not been. I have not either, but it looks huge. It looks really nice. Yeah. They, uh, kind of hard for Tomball, uh, the Cougars, that is. Uh, because, you know, they're really a small 6A. You know, they just barely made it. And so, you know, they're playing other teams that are, you know, with quite a bit more, you know, people in their school. Mm -hmm. But they've been managing to hold their own here lately. But Any other businesses around town that you heard stories about or the people around town? Well, oh yeah, I mean, you know, one of your kinfolk, I'm sure. Mr. Stalins, Bill. Bill, yeah. Yeah, he was a character. Yeah, I remember he always had a little stub of a cigar in the corner of his yeah. mouth, right? He'd always have some words of wisdom. And uh, his wife was really nice. And, but he always had something to say. Yeah. Because, you know, all the kids from school would come over in the morning and get something and, or the after school. And yeah, he had that little, uh, it's sort of like a little drive-in grocery or yeah. whatever it was across the street from the old high school, right? Yeah. yeah. Any other stories about Tomball you'd like to share with us today? Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I, I just love Tomball, and I, you know, 
it's been great to me. Yeah, it's a fun place to grow up, fun place to live even today. Yeah. Well, we sure appreciate the time today, Joe. Thanks for coming in and sharing your stories and your family history with us. Well, no problem. I enjoyed it. All right.